Right. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the special meeting of the Los Angeles City Board of Public Works for Tuesday, March 9, 2021. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, good morning, Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. Roll call and establishment yes. forum for today. We have President Good, Vice President Garcia, President Pro Tem Davis, and Commissioners Coloza and Viegas. President Good, you do have quorum. For the record, all commissioners are dialing in remotely from home, except for President Good, who's dialing in from his city hall office. I, myself, am dialing in remotely from my city hall office, and we're also joined by our general counsel, Mr. Ted Jordan, who is dialing in remotely from home as well. President Good, at this time, we have one member from the general public uh, that would like to speak under public general public comment. We also have one comment or one speaker on the line for item number five for today's special agenda, and we have no commentary under the neighborhood council comment section. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and have our public comment, and then we'll jump into the agenda. Great. Absolutely. Caller ending in 682. Caller ending in 682. The board is now considering general public comment. You'll be given two minutes to speak under this section. Please go ahead. You can do so. Uh, this is Dr. Uh, thank you. This is Dr. Tom Williams uh, speaking as part of the general comments, and I won't speak on item five. I'll wait until Friday. So for general public comment, I would highly recommend that the Bureau of LA Sanitation and Environment go over and their recycling requirements and might say provide a brochure in large type that we can circulate to our neighbors who have plastics, bottles, and cans and paper to recycle. The ones that are online really don't do a whole bunch of things such as can we make it more profitable for the city to recycle if we take the labels off of the jars that you show in one brochure and also off the plastic and the cans. Having grown up during World War II we had to recycle everything, and all the labels had to be taken off, and the cans crushed. Uh, plastic bottles can be cut up fairly easily and or crushed. So we need a bit better guidance, somewhat like uh, Bureau of Sand Environment did with environmental resources, which is a nice eight and a half by 11, Spanish on one side, English on the other, about how to compost, pre-mulch, and it gives the links. So if we could do the same thing with recyclable uh, items, I think we can improve your profitability on recycling. That's all. Mm -hmm. I will not speak on item five. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Mr. President, that concludes the public comments. We will go ahead and close that section out. All right. Thank you, Dr. Campos. Um, all right, folks. We'll I'm going to do, um, we have um, uh, lots of guests and um, expectant faces on the screen, which is great. Um, so uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll quickly take uh, minutes uh, today and, and, and item two, which is bids. Um, uh, and then we're going to go straight to item five. Uh, and then we'll handle the rest of the agenda from there. Okay. Right? Um, so... Uh, uh, Item one is approval of the minutes from Friday, February 26, 2021. Do I have a second to my motion to approve? Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Closa got there first, uh, President Pro Tem Davis. Uh, I got a second from Commissioner Closa. Any objections or concerns, President Pro Tem Davis, Vice President Garcia, or Commissioner Villegas? Not, Not for me. Not for me either. Not for me either. All right, hearing no objections, uh, the, the minutes from Friday, February 26th, 2021 are approved and adopted forthwith. Um, I believe uh, Kumi is right outside. Our next item is um, bids uh, to be received uh, at 10 o'clock for the 7th Street, 7th Street Streetscape uh, Improvements Package 1. Um, work order E1908262, estimated um, uh, uh, cost of the project $6,682,770, and the project is in CD14. So um, 
bids are about to be announced. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The first bid received is from the Los Angeles Engineering Incorporated for a total bid amount of five million seven hundred one thousand seven hundred fifty-five dollars even. That's five seven zero one seven five five from Los Angeles Engineering Incorporated. For the record, line item 31 and line item 46 have been initialed by the contractor. Find out and initial by the contractor. The second bid received is from Palps Incorporated doing business as a self meeting for a total bid amount of $7,264,500 even. That's 7264500. From Pal Incorporated doing business as Excel Paving. <coughs> the third and final bid received for this project is from Selby Miller Contracting Company for a total bid amount of seven million seventy-five thousand five hundred dollars even. That's seven zero seven five five zero zero from Sully Miller Contracting Company. For the record, line item number five, eleven, thirteen, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty have been lined out and initialed by the contractor. Mr. President, that concludes the bill opening for today's agenda. All right, thank you, Dr. Campos. Thank you for me. Um, so do you I have a motion to accept the bids for the 7th Street Streetscape Improvements Package 1. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Viegas. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Any concerns or objections? President Pro Tem Davis or Commissioner Corsi? Uh, for me. I'm good. All right. Uh, hearing no concerns, uh, the bids for the 7th Street Streetscape Improvements Package 1 um, are um, received and accepted. Um, thank you all. So uh, let's go uh, directly to item number five. Um, item number five is a presentation from the Bureau of Engineering for uh, this year's Rory M. Shaw Award 2021. I see the indomitable Gary Lee Moore on the screen, um, and I will hand it over to you, sir. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, it's a real honor and pleasure to be with you this morning. This award means so much. The Rory M. Shaw Award means so much to all of us in the Bureau of Engineering. And last year, it lacked something. And that person was that we missed was Shirley Shaw, Rory's mother. And uh, we are so pleased to, you know, in this world of uh, uh, the COVID pandemic, very many negatives, but this morning is a positive, and that's uh, the ability for us to be joined by Shirley from Michigan. And not just Shirley today, but we're also joined by Rory's sister, Leslie. And uh, it's so special to see her. It's been so many years for me to have seen her. And it's just a very emotional day for all of us in the Bureau of Engineering. So, Shirley, I can't tell you how much I missed that hug and your support at the podium. Uh, Shirley, I'll... I'll I'll let you say good morning, and then I'll go ahead and say some words about Rory and, and today's award winner. Shirley, I'll, I'll, I'll let you say good morning. Oh, good morning to you and to everybody on the board there. I'm saving myself for my old age. Well, <laughs> so I Shirley, expect to be out there when that park is open. <laughs> Shirley, we are, we are monitoring the county of Los Angeles. I monitor it uh, uh, my team knows on a bi-weekly basis, if not more. I've been in touch with the uh, Director of Public Works for LA County Special on it and the Rory M. Shaw Park that the county is leading the development and building. It is progressing. And uh, we continue to prod them to progress it even faster, Shirley, because uh, 
we want to be there with you at the grand opening for that part. I want to be there too. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, and so it's just special to have you both uh, with us here this morning. I would, you know, echo, I would love to just echo that, Gary. Thank you all very much for joining us. This, this is a treat. Thank you. Leslie, if you want to unmute and say anything, and before I go ahead about Rory, please do. Good morning, everyone. Um, I guess I, I would just say I'll echo my mom's uh, sentiments. We, she and I spoke for a minute on the phone before the, the Zoom meeting, and I assured her that no matter what, we will be there, the family will be there, we'll get the house, we'll do the whole thing because, yeah, like you said, it's an emotional time, and we want to be there. We want to see this thing. So, And thank you so much. I'm so pleased that uh, technology allows us to be with everybody here today. So thanks. You know, uh, uh, I'm joined this morning uh, with the executive team of Deborah, Ted, Alfred, Julie, Mahmood, and Jose from our executive team. And I'm, I'm joined from the past award winners, um, Shirley, Catherine, Arson, David, Elisa, Jackie, Maria, Carol, Hortensia, Paul, Steve, Isam. And uh, this is our 16th time giving out this award, and they've come back to join us. Let me talk about Rory M. Shaw and how special he is and was to all of us. You know, uh, let me give you a little bit about Rory here. And uh, Rory was born in uh, uh, September in 57, 1957 in Aurora, Colorado, and uh, Traverse City, Michigan. Shirley's hometown, and many cherries, I'm sure, are on the trees right now. Uh, after he graduated high school, he pursued his studies at Michigan State University. And, Leslie, you've heard of that school, I think. Uh, I know you're a U of M, uh, University of Michigan, right, Leslie? <laughs> That's complicated. Yeah. I went to Michigan State. I graduated from Michigan State. However... <laughs> For the past 30-plus years, the University of Michigan has been, as I say, paying for my education. So when it's U of M, Michigan State Day, I just take, I just zip it and don't say anything. Oh, that's <laughs> well, was definitely Michigan State, all Michigan State. And he got his first degree, a Bachelor of Science degree in mathematics in June of 79. Rory, um, being the exceptional leader he was, he joined the U.S. Navy as, and uh, was a lieutenant. He attended nuclear power school, became a part of the Navy's nuclear power training unit. Of course, he worked in the top secret part, and we'll never know what he really did, but I, he, had, he protected us all. He was honorably discharged from the Navy in March of 1984. In 1985... Rory returned to Michigan State University, where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering in 1990. And lucky for us, Rory decided to interview with the Bureau of Engineering, and we were smart enough to hire Rory, and he joined us in 1991 as a civil engineering assistant in our wastewater uh, engineering division, wastewater systems engineering division. I think... Uh, one of the quotes that I just love about Rory was, uh, he said uh, in 2004, he said, I have been tutored, supervised, advised, and mentored by legends of near mythical past and current members of the Bureau of Engineering who have tried to knock the rough edges off me. Rory had no rough edges. Rory was just dedicated to delivering the best services possible for, for, uh, for the residents of Los Angeles. Unfortunately, uh, we lost Rory in February of 2005 in, in an accident while he was on duty. And uh, we swore we would do everything to protect the, the people of, of the Bureau of Engineering from letting that ever happen again. We also vowed to never forget Rory. And so we established the Rory M. Shaw Employee Award. And a couple of the qualifications about this award is you must have demonstrated outstanding dedication to duty or outstanding leadership qualities, made significant contributions in furthering the BOE's mission, 
individuals by performing his or her duties at a level of excellence far exceeding the established standards. You, you must have developed partnerships with the Board of Public Works, other city departments, bureaus and public agencies, contractors, and, and the community at large. Establish a reputation for professional service, recognized and respected by colleagues, clients, and or supervisors, and demonstrated extraordinary problem-solving capability. These are all, these are just some of Roy's uh, characteristics, but we had to limit them in describing. And this year, I can tell you the nominees that we received from our managers were outstanding. But this year, the executive division unanimously from those nominations picked one person to receive today's award. And I'm, I'm very pleased to say that Ohaji Abdullah is the 2021 Rory M. Shaw Award winner. So congratulations, Ohaji. And there's a lot of virtual clapping right now. Let me tell you a little bit about Ohaji, and then I know our chief deputy city engineer is going to say something, and our principal architect, um, Stephen Fierce, would like to say a few words. First of all, uh, Ohaji uh, uh, moved around as a young child, but finally settled on Los Angeles, thank goodness for all of us. And he moved here in his junior year of high school. He graduated from Washington Prep High School, and he's a proud graduate of Prairie View a and University in Texas, one of our HBCU uh, schools, our historically black colleges and universities. And Ohazi, I was thinking about it, that when I went recruiting there 30 years ago or so, you might have been a freshman when I was there recruiting. So uh, very happy uh, that you chose to join the Bureau of Engineering. And, uh, you know, it really shows the commitment that the Bureau has always had uh, towards reaching out. Uh, I know you'll talk about them, and I know you're married and you have two children. I'll let you introduce them uh, when you get the opportunity to speak. But a little, a little more about uh, the nomination that we received about uh, Ohaji, and it really, Shirley and Leslie, really captures uh, who Rory was. Ohaji is an architectural associate for and a project manager one. Uh, in the nomination form, it says, We've regularly observed Ohaji demonstrating a servant leadership style by jumping in, helping and providing guidance and advice, not only to staff under his supervision, but also to all his colleagues in need. His leadership style is empathetic towards others in the midst of his own pressing workload. That's so Rory. Rory would help all the fellow employees. Now, he might get a little mad at management occasionally that we're not going fast enough, but that's not Ohaji. But, but uh, Rory would help everybody. Rory was the place, the person to go see. And Ohaji, you exemplify that characteristic. You know, Deborah's going to talk about his project, so I'm not going to at this time. But Rory, I mean, Ohaji, and I said Rory there, and it's because I'm just so... So appreciative, Ohaji, of what you do for us. In addition, Ohaji actively promotes engagement of staff to participate in various committees and training opportunities. As is characteristic of Ohaji, he leads by example and currently participates with the Racial Equity Subcommittee, Bureau Strategic Planning, Telecommuting Subcommittee, and the Master Specification Library Subcommittee. The, the nominee uh, goes on to say, over the years, Ohazi has established a close working relationship and partnership and earned the trust and respect of the mayor's office, numerous council offices, the city administrative officer, the city legislative analyst's office, and various city departments and agencies. On a regular basis, he presents at, at the board, at the Board of uh, Recreation and Parks Commissioners, LA for Kids Steering Committees, Council Committees. Ohaji just does it all. And Ohaji, we are just so proud that, that you've been working with us for 20 years. You look the same, just like Shirley looks the same. And uh, I've continued to age, but you look you look great. And with that, I'd now like to introduce our Chief Deputy City Engineer, uh, Deborah Weintraub. Thanks, Gary, and, and welcome, everyone. So, of course, I'm thrilled as an architect in being able to introduce Ohaji to you as an architect in the Bureau of Engineering. And 
Uh, we are blessed and unusual as a city to have really wonderful architectural division. Most cities don't. It, it improves the quality of our projects. And I just want to briefly tell you, you know, Haji joined the city the same year I did. Uh, so um, we kind of grew up together <laughs> with this city system. Um, I just want to briefly tell you about some of the projects he's worked on because it gives you a sense of the, of the range and depth and breadth of his involvement. He started with a small project for cultural affairs uh, in Sun Valley Youth Arts Center, which is a wonderful little boulder, historic boulder structure in Sun Valley. He then also worked on the restoration of the Echo Park Boathouse, which, as you know, is really actively used um, these days. He worked on two neighborhood city halls when we were expanding city services across the city, the one on Central Avenue, which is our first really extensive implementation of a green roof, which is a sustainability approach. He also worked on uh, helping manage the uh, Pacoima Neighbor City Hall, which is a city hall in Pacoima that also includes a cafe, an outdoor movie theater area. It was a complicated project to build uh, that Ohaji helped bring to fruition. He participated on the Civic Center master planning process, helping us to choose our consultants as we looked at how to rethink the Civic Center. Uh, because of his skills and his understanding and love of design and architecture, he worked with the CAO's office, uh, helping to uh, be on the selection committee for the reuse and, and um, uh, renovation of the Lincoln Heights Jail, which is a building along the river just north of downtown. Right now, he's involved with one of our largest building projects, most complicated, the Rancho Cienega Sports Complex, um, where we're building a pool and a new gym and a lot of other facilities. Uh, that's a $50 million project. So his projects have grown in size and complexity and responsibility. Um, he also helped deliver the Estelle Van Meter, which is a multi-purpose center. And I, I just quickly list these to give you a sense of the range of work that Ohaji's done. He's working currently finishing up the Automated Traffic Surveillance and Control Center, or ATSAC, for our Department of Transportation. He's worked for many years with, uh, with Channel 35 Television Studio to help them improve and update their facilities and on quite a few city hall space optimization projects. So. I'm thrilled, of course, being in the midst of a sea of architects. This year, we're giving an award to Ohashi, one of our stellar architects, uh, being a sea of engineers, I'm sorry, one of our stellar architectural employees who just shines in, in every respect. Um, as Gary said, he goes to City Hall for us and always does a great job in representing um, our work and some of the challenges of our work. So I want to say hello to you, Ohashi, and to the rest of your family. and. Uh, I'm just thrilled we, to, to be here 20 years with the city for both of us. I'm thrilled to be able to give you this honor. And with that, I will turn it over to Stephen Fierce, who is our principal architect. Yes, hi. Um, so um, I, I joined the city a little over one year ago. Um, and with over 30 years of professional practice and uh, running my own private, um, my own firm in the private sector for 17 years, I've had the opportunity to work with architects and supervise and mentor staff, now both in um, the private and public sectors. So when I st entered the profession, I had imagined uh, what an architect is, um, a master builder, uh, someone's creative, strong business ethics, having character of mentorship for the profession, and a conscience for the built environment uh, affecting generations to come. So with these in mind, Ohaji stands out among those. Um, I've had the pleasure to work with him. and. His dedication and service exemplify the civil, civil service and what it's meant to be a licensed professional. This year, a substantial amount of the architecture division senior staff retired, and I have watched Ohaji step up and take on the role as a leader and mentor to those with less experience, often when he really doesn't have the time to do it. I am truly grateful to have Ohaji in my division and he is well deserving of this recognition. So um, thank you, and um, I'll turn it back to Gary. Uh, President Good, um, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, but I just want to show uh, for those who are virtually <laughs> um, uh, that uh, we have an award for you, Haji, and uh, I know you come into the office often, so I'll leave it for you. And 
With that, President Good, I'll turn it over to you, the board members. Well, hey, that was um, very inspiring, and and uh, just it's there. There are probably very few times in our lives where good news um, and 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 inspiring work um, has been so prevalent. Or the good news part, not so much. The inspiring work is so prevalent, but to, and, and 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 so welcome and refreshing. Um, uh, to be able to hear um, about such incredible work and such incredible commitment. Um, Ohaji, I, I, I would love it if you, if you want to say a few words to all of us and, you know, congratulations. And we'd love to meet your family. <laughs> Good morning, commissioners uh, and, and executive team members. I, I, number one, I'm honored um, to, to receive this award. I, I truly do appreciate it. Um, I firstly like to say uh, thank you to my family who, who, who have, are attending, uh, my mother and father and many family members across the nation. Uh, thanks to Zoom, they can attend uh, an award ceremony like this. Um, I'd also like to uh, give a special shout out to all of your engineering employees that I've interacted with over the years. Um, your collective knowledge has poured into me and, and that um, added with the work ethic that's developed and, and by my family um, has, has brought us here. Um, and, and I will continue to, to put forth that same effort um, into, um, into all of our projects. And, and, and this award means a lot um, to me. I was here in 2005. I remember the rains. I remember the storm. Um, and I remember the sacrifice that Mr. Shaw uh, put forth for us. Uh, so uh, I'd, I'd like to to, to continue to honor his name, um, and I think we all do, by by pushing forward, taking on the challenges, um, and and overcoming them one at a time. Um, I'd also like to give a special shout out to my my children, my son Omari Abdullah, my beautiful daughter Imani Abdullah, uh, and of course my lovely wife Katrice Abdullah. I don't know if you guys can see them here. <laughs> so, um, they are definitely my rock and, and keep me um, grounded uh, as, as we are all working from home. And I'm sure we all find ourselves working more than less. <laughs> so uh, having family here to, to keep us grounded, keep us from going crazy and, and overworking too much um, has, has definitely been uh, definitely been a, a necessary need for me. Um, and and um, just also want to thank my mother and, and my father again there their collective knowledge, their example that they have set um, in their professional careers um, really helped me raise the bar for myself. Um, at a certain point in life, we set the bar, but as we move through our careers, we have to raise that bar so that we can continue to follow and push for excellence. So um, thank you to all who were involved in, in uh, nominating me. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you to all of the Bureau of Engineering and Architectural Division staff, especially, um, who've been so supportive um, throughout the years. Um, another quick shout out to the two gentlemen who uh, who came down and hired me at Prairie View and University, Mahmoud Karimzade and and Wendell Edford, both um, lifelong mentors to me, and I really really appreciate you all. Thank you, Haji, and it's great to see your family. I have to ask one quick question. Does the name reward and Yana will ring any bells for you? I'm sorry, say again, Mr. Good. Reward and Yanwu. Reward and Yanwu. She was the lead nurse of Washington Prep for many years. That's my brother's mother in law. So I, 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 I feel connected with Washington Prep. Um, so uh, it's great. Um, Colleagues, uh, would folks, I, I know folks are going to have stuff to say. This is this is like one of the, the most enjoyable things we get to do. So uh, mm -hmm. I want to start off with uh, Vice President Garcia. Thank you so much, President Goodmud. Good morning to everyone. You, Ohaji, congratulations. You have a huge fan base. We have like three screens going on now. So congratulations on that. You know, it's a very proud moment to see somebody... Um, flourish as much as you have and to see your family your lovely family
our city engineer talking good things about you in a public setting, but your family standing next to you must be the best feeling in the world. So congratulations to you and thank you for everything that you have done. Miss uh, Ms. Shaw and Leslie, thank you for being here one more year again. You know, this is different than the years before, but we honor the memory of Rory all the time. And I can't wait to open that park as well. All the community benefits that it will bring. And um, Ohaji, that. you're definitely going to be part of that. So my son, the lady. Thank, you. Thank you all. Congratulations again, Ohaji. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Uh, President Pro Tem Davis. Thank you so very much, uh, President uh, Good. First, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Mrs. Shaw. We missed you last year because of COVID-19, and it's such an honor to have you with us this year. And to um, the sister, Leslie, thank you so very much also for being here. We are very appreciative, and of course, we know of the great work of the University of Michigan and Michigan State. Uh, but I want to thank first starting out uh, Gary Lee Moore that he brings to us not only honors us by commemorating Rory Shaw's contribution to the city of Los Angeles, but this award really has two impacts upon the great city of Los Angeles. The second impact is, is that it urges achievement among those who serve in the city of Los Angeles. It encourages achievement. And for that, that is one of the core values of the Board of Public Works, is to make sure that we not only have service delivery on one hand, but that the service that we deliver is done so in an excellent manner. And so, Gary, thank you so much for this leadership as our Bureau Chief of Engineering. Uh, to Ahaji uh, Abdallah, uh, you do the School of Architecture at Prairie View A&M proud. We know of the outstanding work that they create in their, in, in, in their students. And I've had the pleasure to work with you and communicate with you over the years as we have talked about the need for making sure that we continue to reach out to all of the schools uh, of architecture and engineering because Los Angeles is a multicultural city, international city. And you have, again, done Prairie View A&M School of Architecture proud. And we are so glad that the work that you have done is recognized by the Bureau. And you really exemplify the commitment and some of the traits that were mentioned of leadership that Roy Shaw exuded during his tenure here. So continue to do your work. And I have to tell you that of all of the work that you have delivered, one thing that rang a bell to me is of the Estelle Van Meter Center. I started out in the state legislature, believe it or not, as a staff member in the 48th Assembly District, of which was the state office that represented the Estelle Van Meter Center when I started working in the legislature. And I have to tell you that I had the pleasure of knowing Estelle Van Meter. I don't know if you knew her, but I knew Estelle Van Meter, who was an older woman who had been in South Los Angeles for some time, worked very closely with the police department, but that her center was the centerpiece for a lot of senior citizens in South LA. And I remember the center before you delivered the new one. And so it is a service, speaking of service delivery, that's so critically important in South Los Angeles. And those seniors still gather around uh, the lunch program that we have there and the various other programs that we have there. So of all of the work that you have done, the Estelle Van Mita Center is one that certainly is dear to my heart because I not only knew of the service that we provided there, but I knew Miss Estelle Van Mita. So I thank you so very much and I am so proud that you have done Prairie View and m proud. And I'm sure your continued work with Gary Lee Moore and our dynamic uh, Bureau of Engineering will continue to make all of those of us on the Board of Public Works proud. So congratulations, you're very deserving, and we're very pleased of what you have been able to do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Really appreciate that. Um, uh, let's go to Commissioner Villegas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and congratulations. 
as well. Uh, it's a big uh, deal today just to be able to be joined, um, you know, just to a different platform. And uh, I'm glad that we were all able to, to join from just all over the country uh, today to give you this accolade and honor um, uh, Mr. Abdallah and uh, to be able to be with friends and family. Uh, you know, I heard, um, I think I heard this twice is the servant leadership that uh, some of your colleagues observed from you and that's just doing work obviously with compassion and with great uh, dedication. Uh, but I don't think that you would be doing that if it wasn't a value system that uh, you share with the Bureau of Engineering. And that's through the leadership also of, of Gary Lee Moore and of, of Deborah, of Mahmoud, of all the senior leadership over at Bureau of Engineering that take time to recruit, to get the right people, to help build the team. Uh, and, and that's an example of the, the, the genuine leadership that um, Mr. Rory Shaw exemplified. And uh, it's all in the same line of a value system. Uh, that, uh, that that you see yourself in, um, and that's a it's a great honor um, today to be in line with that and to be able to uh, you know share this moment with all of close friends and family and uh, congratulations and thank you to the Shaw family for for just making the effort and joining us. Uh, you know we all share in the same spirit of uh, having that uh, Wetlands Park dedicated soon. Um, and just being able to to rejoice in that effort, um, being done with a lot of love and gratitude. Congratulations, felicidades. Thank you, Commissioner Villegas. Um, Commissioner Colosa. Thank you, President Good. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, Ohaji, congratulations. Um, this is such a, a special day for you, such a special day in your uh, what will be a, a very long career, hopefully, at the city. I know you, it's been mentioned that you've been here for, for 20 years already, but I know you're going to be here for, for at least 20 plus more because we need uh, people like you. Um, and so you're, you're not going to go anywhere. I know we're going to hold on to you. Um, uh, but first and foremost, just want to again echo the, the sentiments of my colleagues. I uh, just want to thank Ms. Shaw for being here and looking fabulous all the way in Michigan. Um, thank you for joining us this morning, as well as Leslie. I hope that um, the Bureau of Engineering and under Gary's leadership that they've made you proud to see how Rory has been honored. Um, for so many years and that will continue to honor him in all these different ways. And that's really the, the lasting impact that he's had, um, not just on the city, but with the people that he's worked with. Yeah. Um, so thank you for, for being here. Um, uh, to our city engineer, Gary uh, and, and Deborah and the entire exec team, um, to echo the sentiments again of my colleagues, thank you for continuing this tradition. Um, it's an important one in that um, it, it allows to, to Dr. Davis's point to, to really truly remember Rory and, and two, to, to encourage um, this leadership amongst, amongst your team. And even though there's only one award given every year, I know that um, these values are something that, that really reverberate uh, throughout the the entire BOE staff. So it's it's really a special day and my favorite presentation day for, for BOE. Um, to, to you, Ohaji, um, there, there's so much um, amazing things to say about you and your leadership. Um, I think it's clear from what we've heard from Deborah and from all your colleagues that you don't just care about the work, right? You care also about the people behind the work. And that's why you're here today. Um, you, you continue to invest uh, not just in the city, but in your colleagues and in everyone's success. And that's why we're able to uh, deliver projects that Deborah named off um, in, in the degree that we do um, every single year, because that you know that we're part of a bigger team here delivering these services for the benefit of, of the community. And that's really what this work is, is about. And there's so many, um, when Gary was naming off all the, the attributes that uh, Rory exemplified that were part of the criteria 
you know, duty, dedication, leadership, respect, problem solving, you know, that's, that's amazing that, um, that the, all those things that you're, you're being recognized for, and you don't have to be the loudest person in the room. You know, you, you, it's about these decisions that you make behind the scenes that everybody takes notice of. And that's what's, what's really special. And so I, I hope you take this, um, this moment and that you, you really enjoy it and you treasure it. Um, and that it's even more special because your family is able to join you from uh, all over the, the world. And so that's really remarkable. And you even brought, I think I saw, um, I think I saw a few people here out of retirement. So that's that's how popular you are. You you bought um, a few people out of retirement here. Who did I see? I think I saw at least one person. But um, I, I wanted to end it on on a note that uh, I think Dr. Davis will appreciate. Um, somebody that he quotes often, but uh, it's a quote that that sticks with me every time he says it. Um, but Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King um, had this great quote about service, and he says, um, everyone can be great because anybody can serve. And I think that uh, what you, that's what you've exemplified today. And so just want to thank you again for your service. I can't wait to see what you'll do for the next 20 year, 20 plus years of your career at the city. And uh, we're so proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Commissioner Closa. Um, uh, Ohaji, I don't know if um, Gary mentioned this, but that's actually the, the, the price of this award is that you don't get to go anywhere for a long, long time. Um, so just, I just want to make that really crystal clear here. Um, uh, so, you know, I would just echo my colleagues um, and, and first first off thanking um, the, 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 the Ms. Shaws. Um, it's, a, it's a real pleasure. This is my first uh, time um, as as president of the board to uh, uh, be a part of this uh, celebration, and it's um, obvious that uh, that uh, your your son and your brother had a profound um, and lasting impact um, on this bureau and in this city. So thank you so much uh, for his service um, uh, at, at, while working here, but then. The, the legacy of this service, which has so clearly impacted um, so many people. Um, thank you all and thank you for joining. Um, really appreciate it. Um, we also want to thank the Bureau, um, Gary, Deborah, everyone, all, yeah, all those retirees who managed to pull out of bed, um, you know, made them put down their mimosas and, 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 and join us here. Um, you know, th those who don't know, and I think everyone on here does. Um, the Bureau of Engineering, everybody in it has got hearts the size of Rhode Island, and um, uh, th th that's that's so exemplified by by what we're what we're, we're seeing here. And then, you know, Haji, um, I have not had the opportunity to work with you a ton, but sometimes it's most instructive to hear what other folks have to say about people, um, uh, and that really tells the story. And you know. Um, uh, along with being a servant, my, my, my personal belief is that um, to get really black belt in any job, anything we do in our lives, um, uh, we, we become teachers. Um, and we're always teaching. And we teach through our modeling and our performance. And we teach um, by the way we interact and, and help uplift the people around us. And it's very, very clear that, that Rory Shaw um, did that, um, and it's very clear uh, that you did that, uh, or you did you do that, and you'll be doing it again in perpetuity um, since you got this award. Um, so uh, thank you for everything you do. Um, thank you, uh, Gary, Deborah, everyone who's here. Um, thank you, uh, Ahaji, for um, um, you know blessing us with getting to meet your family and everything. It's uh, really fantastic, and uh, congratulations. Uh, uh, this is an exciting day. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Haji. All right. With that, we have to turn to more mundane uh, things. So um, everyone's welcome to stay. You probably don't want to. 
have great days and uh we'll see you uh in the near future thank you everybody see you again Sohachi. thank you miss shaw thank you Ms. Shaw. thank you Ahashi. No. thank you Ahashi's family <laughs> thank you for everything thank you all right colleagues and friends uh let's go now to item number three in our agenda and just as a reminder for folks to get new folks on here if you're not speaking please make sure i'm mute just because it all really comes in here so colleagues we actually have a very brief agenda as you gather um and what we'll do is go to item three item three um is a budget increase and in change order number three Lead Electric Inc. Capital Improvement Project 7256 Venice Pumping Plant Variable Frequency Drives Number One and Number Four Replacement and CIP 7257 Bayona Creek Pumping Plant Variable Variable Frequency Drives Replacement Projects. Recommending the board. Uh, thank you for that, Ethan. Um, recommending the board one. Authorize $248,677 in additional contingency for the CIP 7256 Venice Pumping Plant Variable Frequency Drives numbers 1 and 4 and the CIP 7257 Bayona Creek Pumping Plant VFDs Replacement Project. I think that takes it for the longest project name I've, I've, I've read thus far. Um, and approve a revised construction budget of $1,742,462.70 for the project, and to authorize the city engineer to issue change order number three for the project to procure new motor feeder cables for the VFDs. Um, Mr. Wong is with us. I believe you're, pre you're, are you presenting on this, Ethan? I am. All right. Good morning. Jump on in. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Ethan Wong with the Bureau of Engineering's Environmental Engineering Division. Uh, so the request we have before you, um, uh, just let me give a little bit background on the project first. Um, so we have two different pumping plants that are part of this overall contract, uh, the Venice pumping plant and the Bayona Creek pumping plant. Um, so at the, the Venice project, uh, we are replacing two um, variable frequency drives, which basically are um, motors for pumps that can vary in speed uh, based on, on the amount of flow that is coming into the pumping plant. So this uh, effectively controls the amount of water being pumped and helps with power consumption and uh, also to help the pumps operate more efficiently. Um, so we're replacing two um, VFDs um, at the Venice pumping plant and we're replacing uh, for at the Bayona project. Um, so all of the, the VFDs we're replacing have reached the end of their service life. So that is the purpose of the project. Um, in doing the work, uh, we discovered at the Venice pumping plant that the um, feeder cables that power the existing VFDs are actually um, deteriorating. Uh, the insulation on these cables is broken and therefore unsafe to reuse. Our original scope was uh, to basically disconnect the uh, existing VFDs, use the existing electrical cables and rehook them up. Um, since we discovered that these cables are damaged and cannot be reused, um, we are here uh, before you requesting um, increase in budget of $248,677 to cover the costs to replace these cables. Um, that seems like a lot of money for electrical cables, but these cables um, are over two inches thick um, and there's over 1100 feet of these cables that we need to replace. So it's actually a pretty big job to do that work. Um, be happy to answer any questions about this report at this time. Thank you, Ethan. Um, colleagues, any questions? We'll start with uh, Vice President Garcia. Thank you, President Good. I don't have any questions. Ethan, good report. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Uh, President Pro Tem Davis. Yeah, Ethan, just for basic information, in terms of the timeline of this project, what is the uh, timeline uh, here uh, as it relates to these uh, 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 pumps 
are the motives for the prompts? Uh, Dr. Davis, do you mean um, the overall duration of the, the project? Yes, yes. The timeline do you anticipate uh, involved in this project? We haven't we haven't done the purchase yet, right? Or have we? Have we already? Uh, yeah, we, we already. Yeah, oh. we're about. Uh, I would say about eighty percent complete at this point. Um, okay. So we need to just install. Um, so we're getting ready to to rehook up the um, the VFDs or the new VFDs. So that's when we discovered the issue with the, the existing cables. Um, so and, yeah. and how long do you think it will be that we will be able to complete the project? You said you're eighty percent complete thus far. Yeah. So it's how long will the twenty percent? No. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably take. It'll probably take between uh, two and three months to, to okay. complete. Yeah, that's what I was trying to find out. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Got it, Mr. Thank you. If you're bored with us, Ms. Shaw, all you have to do is hit the hang up button, and it'll 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 uh, it'll it'll set you free. <laughs> from us. <laughs> not that Ethan's uh, 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 VFDs are not incredibly compelling um, uh, scintillating stuff, no doubt. Um, uh, Commissioner Villegas. Thank you, Ethan, for your report. I don't have any questions either. I'm good. Thank you. Um, and Commissioner Colosso. Um, I don't have any questions for Mr. Wong. I thought he um, gave a good presentation. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Sh Mr. Rory Shaw would have been interested in this project. That's why we have Ms. Shaw listening in uh, for yeah. him. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Ethan, just one, I do just want to ask. Uh, so, I mean, w was there no way for us to be able to tell in the original bid um, that the motor feeder cables were precarious? Yeah, not without um, direct uh, investigation into where the cabinet is um so obviously like this being a high voltage area and it's in service um we try to limit the you know access to this area so um yeah we would have only known if we would have opened the cabinet to see where the um the the um the basically the condition of the cables uh we we at, during design we expected that they would not um be damaged like this. Um, it's actually unusual, uh, given the life of when these were installed in the early 2000s, that we, they would deteriorate to this point. So uh, it was unexpected, definitely. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ethan. Um, I have no further questions. Um, do I have a motion to approve the, the uh, item? So moved. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Any concerns or objections, Commissioner Villegas or Vice President Garcia? None. All right, hearing no objections, the um, item, uh, this will be subject to the mayor's cost containment process, correct, Dr. Campos? Or will it? No. Mr. it Mr. Order? President, great, great question. No, it would not. We do have a blanket exemption on file for change orders that are within the same original scope of the original project. So I believe based on the uh, report and the testimony presented by Mr. Wong, this is the original project, so it's exempted. Or the, I, I should say the approval's already in place. Right, right. Um, okay. Thank you. All right, um, that brings us uh, to our final item for the day, folks. This is item number four. This is a bid rejection, pedestrian tunnel closures at various locations, recommending the board reject all bids received for this project and notify all bidders of the board action. Um, Steve Chen is with us. Good morning, Steve. Morning, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, great, all right. Yeah, I'm Steve Chen, Bureau of Engineering, and I'm here to recommend uh, rejection of bids for this project. This is the um, pedestrian tunnel, tunnel closure project at various locations. And basically what this project is was for was to close five pedestrian tunnels uh, located in CD4, uh, Council District Number 4, um, Hollywood Boulevard and New Hampshire Avenue. Um, there's also three tunnels in CD9, uh, 52nd Street in Vermont, 52nd Street in Hoover, 
and also 60th Street and Figueroa Street, and also one more tunnel uh, in City 13, uh, Fletcher Drive between Avenue 34 and Estara Avenue. Um, and um, basically those silver, silver work, the, these tunnels were intended for uh, allowing uh, basically children to attend schools at the um, schools that are adjacent to these tunnels. And these, what these, these are subterranean tunnels with uh, stairwells that lead down to the, uh, to the tunnels on either side of the tunnel. And what this project entails is to demolish those entrances and create a concrete slab on a metal deck, basically to seal off each entrance of the stairwell um, and therefore permanently closing the uh, tunnel. Uh, this was requested by all the different council offices as um, there was just um, basically unwanted activity that was occurring in those tunnels. And so this is the recommendation for the, uh, for the project and we are recommending to uh, reject um, all bids at this time. All right, uh, thank you, Steve. Um, Questions, colleagues. Um, President Pro Tem Davis. Okay, Steve. So we're rejecting all bids because they were over. Or yeah, I'm over? sorry. I for, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, yeah, um, we've reached, received two bids. I, I sorry for, for forgetting that piece of information. Um, we received um, two bids. The city engineer's estimate was uh, 1.021 million, and uh, we, the low bid we received. Actually, think of an pursuing an alternative approach to doing these tunnel closures uh, by using our Department of General Services um, staff to uh, perform the construction. They have also done a similar type of construction on a uh, pedestrian tunnel in another district, and so we feel that they could do the job as well. So we're proposing to choose an alternate approach to construct these tunnels. Do you think that our estimate? perhaps is off of the market in terms of what the private contractors uh, have to assess based upon, you know, their usage of uh, financing resources and what it costs them to do it now? Are we a little off, do you think? Yeah, um, it, it could be a combination, I think. Um, I think there's a, there's just, uh, this was somewhat of an unusual project. It's in five different locations. And so uh, there was, a, I think, additional cost for the contractors to account for that, um, having to uh, demobilize and remobilize at multiple locations. Um, and also, I think there's just some little, some little bit of um, uh, maybe, I don't know if it's uh, what they called maybe the uh, pandemic factor where uh, they have to follow additional uh, safety measures in their construction. And so those are some of the things I think that maybe increase the bids uh, somewhat. And so resulting in the higher bids, yeah. Okay. So then I guess your alternative that we can do it in-house certainly would get it back into the financial realm of what we think is affordable at this time. Yeah, I believe so with um, uh, working with GSD. I think, uh, again, they have shown their ability to do this work in the past. Um, and because we're in-house um, staff, I think, you know, certainly with our budget situation, uh, you know, if we can keep work within city staff, it's always a, a something like to to look at as well to keep the funding uh, within city staff. And that was another option that we're looking at. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you, President Um uh, Vice President Garcia. Thank you, President Good. I don't have any question. I was briefed by um, Mr. Chen yesterday. So thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see your background too. Thank you. All right, uh, Commissioner Villegas. No, I'm good. Thank you. But I uh, appreciate um, my colleague uh, Davis's question just to provide a little bit more context. Um, I'm good. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and Commissioner Colosa. Uh, thank you, President Good. I don't have any questions for Mr. Chen. Um, thank you. Okay. Um, Stephen, one quick question. Um, I I'm curious because I know these things are effectively becoming nuisances. Um, in most places. How many of these are there in the city? Good question. Uh, I don't have the exact number, but I want to say around about 100. Really? Yeah. Um, they, they've actually, we've closed quite a few of them over the past several years, over a lot of time, but there's just a few that are, well, I, quite a few that are still remaining to be closed, yeah, or to be addressed, I should say. I'm sure, and, and are they most, uh, are they disproportionately based in Central City and... Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, I don't have a real statistic on that, but um, uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily say that either. Um, but I, I don't. I can't say for certain. I don't have the information and, and about that. Yeah. La last question. All of this is more of a curiosity to me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, does does LAUSD have any sort of interest in them, um, either from a um, from a property ownership standpoint, or uh, you know, best of right? I, or, yeah. Well, in a lot of the cases, we've been working with the school principal, the school staff, you know, uh, and that's a lot usually where a lot of the complaints initially started from. Uh, goes, then goes obviously to the neighbor council or into the council offices, and then um, they've been trying all sorts of different ideas, you know, uh, even like temporary closures to uh, limit. Um, you know, passage through only only during school hours and having escorted, you know, uh, children through. But it just over time, it just became to the point where it was uh, unmanageable. And so, uh, it's kind of the, the, the similar story for each uh, location where this was just the solution that they wanted to to uh, pursue. Very much see. Yeah. I'm curious with the scope of it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, Probably and made sense in the beginning. It's sort of like those tunnels under the bridge, yeah. walk tunnels. I can see. Yeah, it's, yeah. It makes sense when they were built a long time ago, but uh, you know, I think times have changed, and um, this is the, the solution at this time. So. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, I have no further questions. Um, I'll motion to approve the item. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Any objections, Commissioners Cloisa Villegas or President Pro Tem Davis? Unknown for me. All right. Um, hearing no objections, this uh, item is adopted forthwith. Dr. Campos, does that clear the, the decks? Yes, it does. All right. So uh, with that, that was uh, a lovely presentation. It was really uh, cool. So um, uh, the meeting is hereby officially adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Ms. Shaw. She's still on. Oh, she's not on anyway. <laughs> that was fun. All right. Bye, y'all. All right.